Everybody knows that I love bread. I posted several bread recipes over the years and I had a daily bread recipe that I made literally every week in the bread maker. I know how to make bread in the oven. I can do it in the oven. I make sourdough breads, regular breads with yeast in the oven. But the thing about the bread maker is it is quick and it's efficient and it saves me time. And I don't have a lot of time being single, running a full-blown homestead by myself. So I bought this bread maker in 2013 and I have made at least one loaf of bread in it every week since this thing just keeps right on rocking it was one of the cheapest bread makers you can get i think i paid 29 dollars for it new at walmart might have been 39 dollars, but either way they're still relatively cheap today it's an oster two pound bread maker you can get them on amazon i'll try to leave a link down in the description I highly recommend it if you don't have a bread maker because it just saves you so much time. Anyways, three years ago I got cancer. And the chemo and radiation, because it was neck and tonsil and throat cancer, the chemo and radiation basically wiped out my taste buds or in saliva glands. So foods kind of tasted funny and saliva glands are just gone. I don't know if you know how important saliva glands are, but they're very important for eating food. And also it makes it kind of hard for me to talk sometimes because my tongue tries to stick to the roof of my mouth or to my gums or to the side of my mouth. It's just kind of crazy. Anyways, I haven't been able to eat bread. Now, I like bread. I love bread. I used to eat bread every week. So I started on this path to invent a new bread recipe that I could eat. And basically, that's what I came up with. And it's so good that I shared it on my personal Facebook. Few people tried it there. Few people gave me some suggestions. And now I have the recipe perfect for everyone. This is a very fluffy, light bread maker bread. It is lighter than store-bought bread, even. Um... It doesn't take a lot of saliva to swallow it, so it kind of worked out perfect. That was the goal I was after. So, as far as ingredients go, you're going to need um, vanilla Greek yogurt. Now, I use a light Greek yogurt. You can use just whatever Greek yogurt you've got. Mine's vanilla. You're going to need three-quarter cups of warm milk. Two tablespoons of butter melted, two tablespoons of olive oil, three tablespoons of local honey, not store bought honey if you can get that, one and a quarter teaspoons of salt, three and a half cups of all purpose flour, one and a half teaspoons of instant yeast. Add that into the bread maker in the order, and this is what we'll come up with. I'll show an image right here. And uh, let's go ahead and get this made. We are going to start out with a three-quarter cup of vanilla yogurt. I'm actually using a one-cup measuring cup, so I'm just going to estimate the three-quarter cup part of it. I do that a lot in my recipes. I don't always necessarily use measuring cups, but I do try to get it pretty close. Try to get as much of this out of the measuring cup as I can. Then you want three quarters cup of warm milk. I'm going to use that same measuring cup and I'm going to add warm water to it. Basically just tap hot water. Hot. And then I'll add three tablespoons of Nido powdered milk. I don't actually use like store-bought milk most of the time because it's just easier for me to do powdered milk. Now, you can use any kind of powdered milk you want or you can use regular milk. I'm just going to use powdered milk. That's what I prefer. So, 
three tablespoons. And the next thing you're going to need is two tablespoons of melted butter. This is our two tablespoons of melted butter going in. And if you notice that I have long sleeves on, I'm not sure if that's even in the, if you can tell or not. I have on a heated jacket inside my house that is 63 degrees because I'm freezing from perif peripheral neuropathy. Next, we need two tablespoons of olive oil. There's one tablespoon. Two tablespoons. Next, we are going to need three tablespoons of honey. This is honey that I got out of my own beehives. I know it's local honey. So that's what I'm using. There's one. Two. There's the three tablespoons of honey. Next, you're gonna need one and a quarter teaspoons of salt. Use whatever kind of salt you prefer. Then we're gonna use three and a half cups of all-purpose flour. There is one. My measuring cup was actually wet, so I'm gonna scrape this first one out. Two, three, and it looks about like a half. Next, you need one and a half teaspoons of yeast. I usually like to take and put me like a little dimple in the center of the flour. See that dimple in the center of the flour goes almost all the way down to the liquid. Kind of builds like a little volcano inside there. Then that's right where I put my yeast at. Next we're going to close the lid. We're going to do two pound loaf size light crust basic menu and press start let this do its thing I'll bring you back when it's done now one thing that's a little bit different about this bread is it is a little bit more wet than you would expect to see in a bread maker so this is a very wet dough if yours don't look like that you need to add a little bit of water to it I'm actually doing this a few minutes early because I don't want to forget it. But when you get down to about the last 15 minutes of the baking, you want to take and melt you some butter and put on the top of it so that way it has time to crust over. I got to do this really fast, so I try not to keep this lid open very long. I've got about 20 minutes of the bake cycle left. And uh, basically you just slosh butter on there and uh, that helps helps everything out with how your final product turns out you get the idea I'll bring you back when it's done and once the bread maker is done you want to go ahead and remove the bread.
And then what I do is I dump it out onto a cooling rack. I'm kind of doing this hopefully where you can see. The bread's always come out of this bread maker really, really easy. I don't worry about digging the paddle out like a lot of people freak out about that. I don't let it bother me. But I do go ahead and put more butter on it. You can't even see that. So once it's out, I go ahead and put more butter on it. Pretty healthy amount of butter. If you walk away from here learning anything today, you want to learn that you do not cut warm bread fresh out of a bread maker or out of an oven. As hard as it is, because trust me, I love warm bread myself. As hard as it is, though, you want to let it cool down naturally all the way through before you cut into it. That will keep your bread from drying out. So there's what we look like. I'll cut into it here in a little bit after it cools down. All right, folks. Gonna have to excuse if you do see me and realize that I'm all sweaty. It's because I just got done running a 5K on the treadmill and I did some other stuff around the house. Everything to get this done so I can come back and slice this bread. Now this bread's not all the way cool but if you have watched my how to keep bread fresher longer, you know I almost always have a solution to everything. So I'm going to go ahead and slice this off even though it's, it's, it's really only like body temperature warm now. But all that heat allows the steam to be released out of this bread and then your bread dries out. If you haven't seen that video, I'll link to it in this video description or in the top right of your screen, however YouTube's doing it this week. But I'm slicing off some for some uh, getting ready to make me a peanut butter sandwich, which is the other thing I haven't been able to eat since I got cancer because I made a big old pot of chili because the temperatures got down into like the 20s last night. And cold weather always signifies chili with peanut butter sandwiches. Now, if you haven't seen that video, you probably just saw what I did. I stuck the bread, cut in down on top of aluminum foil. Then I molded the aluminum foil around the bread. What that does is that keeps the bread moist and keeps that steam from being released. Should show you what this bread probably looks like. On the inside, see it there? This is really soft bread. Give it a try. Let me know what you like or don't like about it down in the comments. As always, thanks for watching. God bless you. God bless your families. God bless your homesteads.